Hi, so my name is Victoria Smith. I am with South Valley Academy. I work in the College and Career Readiness Department um, at our school. Um, I've been in education for about 10 years now. I've done lots of different things in education and have really found um, my passion and my home um, working with students regarding their post-secondary choices. And so this is something I'm extremely passionate about and I'm really grateful for the new partnership um, that we're building with Martha and Project ECHO through United Way. Um, so I'm just sharing a little bit um, about timelines that we follow for our students to support them in those um, post-secondary choices that they have. Um, so high school is definitely a time for students to build their foundation, to really explore their interests and kind of start making those decisions about what they might wanna do next. Um, and choosing the right path for each student is really, really important in order for them to be successful. And so, we get the opportunity to partner with our students and being able to explore some of those options and determine what next steps are gonna look like for them. Um, before I jump into that, just a, a couple points of emphasis, emphasis regarding our school specifically. Um, South Valley Academy is a six through 12 charter located in the South Valley of Albuquerque. Um, our student population is over 90% Hispanic and the majority of our students are children of Mexican immigrant parents. Um, over 90% of our students are eligible for the free reduced lunch um, and over 90% of our students do choose to attend college in some, man some manner. Um, the majority of our students are first generation high school graduates and or college graduates. Um, so that just speaks a lot to um, family backgrounds that they come from. A lot of their parents have not um, pursued education beyond third or fourth grade. 62% um, of our students um, are typically accepted into a four-year college, 15% into a two-year, and 21% um, pursue those in the industry certificate programs. Um, in addition, 70% of our professional staff do hold advanced degrees, and 68% of them are colleagues of color. Um, so um, we do serve a very um, specific population of students and families here. Um, we are very unique. Um, in that at the core of our charter is our college and career readiness program in addition to our service learning program, um, which students are required to take um, classes for both. Um, our service learning program, they start in ninth grade and they end in their senior year with a senior capstone project. Um, and our, our college and career readiness program um, is integrated beginning this year into their advisories. Um, but it's really an opportunity for students to begin working on some of those soft skills that they're going to need in college and do a lot of that college and career exploration. Um, so they start in ninth grade and, and move up to their senior year, at which point we're helping them with those scholarship applications, college applications, and we'll look a little bit at those timelines. Some dynamics of what our school looks like, what our environment is like around here. Um, so the importance of considering post-secondary options for students, um, one of the things that I really like to emphasize to our students is to have a plan. Um, we, we are a college prep school. Um, it, it is really one of the um, core values that we have that we're creating lifelong learners. That looks different for a lot of students though, and not every student is going to attend a four-year college. So really just helping them know what options they have and, and having a plan. Um, so one of the, biggest um, challenges for students is really knowing what it is they want to do. And part of that is knowing who they are and um, acknowledging their background, um, their culture. And once they have a better understanding of who they are as an individual, it's a lot easier for them to navigate what they might want to do and how they, they want to contribute. Um, so post-secondary education definitely allows students to identify that, um, but that's something that we're able to do on a, on a daily basis as well. Um, of course, one of the biggest things that um, we can emphasize to students is having that post-secondary education also gives them the opportunity to earn more money. Um, and money, money is a huge motivation for the majority of us in a lot of what we do, um, just to be able to pay bills and, and provide for their families. Um, that's, that's super important for them. And so we often will show them information from um, the Department of Labor in terms of um, 
like median income for for individuals who have only a high school diploma versus a college degree um, and just uh, job opportunities as well. They have more career options um, with that post-secondary education. Um, and then they just have new, the opportunity for new experiences and meeting new people and other ways of life, other perspectives, other cultures. Um, so you can go ahead and go to the next one. And so timelines, um, while there's a lot of overlap and, and potentially a lot of repetition over the years for students, um, it does look different. Um, ninth graders obviously are not ready to start choosing a college at that time, but we can really um, start meeting with them. We can discuss what courses they might need to take um, based on what their plans are for after high school. Um, particularly, we see in the areas of, of math, depending on what path they want to take after high school, they might want to pursue different math options, math class options. Um, it, additionally, then in the winter, maybe start learning how to get involved in those extracurricular activities, um, those things that do look good on a college application or even a scholarship application. Um, we also um, like to start preparing them for some of those scholarship um, programs that we partner with that are going to look at their extracurriculars in addition to their academics. Um, and then in the spring, it's always a good idea to have them um, either on their own or as a school. We also take trips um, to in-state schools. Um, we love to attend CNM's College Day events, um, UNM, of course, NMSU, um, New Mexico Tech, some of those in-state schools that we can take them to visit. No, go ahead. I was trying to let um, a new participant in and that's what happened, so. <laughs> Um, so then in, in 10th grade, um, some things that they can start looking at doing is the summer before their 10th grade year, looking for volunteer opportunities um, or even internship opportunities, um, things that will give them the opportunity to explore some of their interests as we continue to narrow down what they might be interested in. I'm sorry, we just lost power. Um, some things that they might be interested in as we continue to help them narrow down their pathway. Um, and then, of course, meeting with them to begin researching some options, um, looking at what those entrance requirements are, um, things that they need to be cognizant of um, instead of waiting till their senior year and deciding, I want to be a doctor, but now I've done no planning, no preparation to be able to, to be successful in that path. Um, by the winter, the winter we want to start having, um, I would even say fall um, of their 10th grade year, start looking at some online courses or dual credit courses. Um, we partner extensively with CNM to, for our students to be able to take those dual credit classes. It kind of gives them some exposure to college life and what they might look like and the opportunity to advance academically as well. Um, and then even um, have them joining some um, peer discussion groups. Um, a lot of that happens in our advisory programs where they can kind of talk about different interests, um, some tips, some strategies, things that have worked for them as they're kind of traveling this journey together. Thank you. Um, so for our 11th grade students, I, I tend to tell um, our juniors that this is really their most important year in high school and not their senior year, um, that, that their junior year is where they really start making some more solid plans um, and preparation. So those campus visits look a little bit differently um, for a junior than they might for a freshman. They're, they're really starting to look at um, things that they might be interested in on a college campus. Um, what clubs do they have to offer? What um, degree programs do they have to offer? What does campus life look like um, as they kind of start narrowing down um, talking to those academic advisors at schools that they might be interested in, um, understanding what um, the course requirements might be, what those prerequisite requirements might be, making sure that they are in um, those rigorous classes that will prepare them um, for those, those degree programs. And then of course, signing up for summer coursework, whether it's through CNM, um, UNM, or, or other programs um, in order to really help them prepare. Of course, 12th grade year um, for us um, with our students is always very busy. It feels like there's never enough time to squeeze everything in for them. Um, a lot of what we do by the 12th grade year um, 
by the time they enter their 12th grade year, um, ideally our students have already written a draft of their personal statement essays that they will use. Um, we utilize Common App, so you know, supporting essay writing through those Common App um, essay prompts, finalizing their lists of schools that they really um, intend to apply to. Um, we hold lots of FAFSA workshops, um, walking students and their families through what that looks like. Um, even more so in the coming years, in the next couple of years, um, we're gonna have to provide a lot of support in like, what does that look like? How does applying for FAFSA, um, how does it benefit students? And really just making sure they have the information that they need because we do serve um, a community that just doesn't have information regarding post-secondary options. Um, so really making sure that they have all of the resources and information that, that they need for that. Um, we work on those college applications. Um, all week this week, we've actually been having them making sure that their common app accounts are set up so that they be, can begin the process of, of getting those applications in order. Um, and then of course, once a student has earned admittance into a school, we wanna make sure that they finalize their decision, transcripts are in order, they have all their credits in place, any scholarships they wanna apply for have, you know, that's all been taken care of. Um, so like I said, it's a lot of overlapping um, process. It just kind of builds kind of like Lego blocks. <laughs> they, we kind of build on um, what we do with them in their freshman year. Um, we have really great opportunities to partner with um, outside um, community-based organizations, um, like Southwest Creations and their ASEA um, program, which really supports um, students in preparing for post-secondary success. Um, we partner with a couple different um, scholarship programs in state, the Simon Scholars and the Davis New Mexico Scholarship Program, which in addition to providing scholarship opportunities for students, really just provide them um, with resources and support to, to prepare them um, for life after high school. Um, some of the other things that we do, um, like I said, we have um, this week in advisories, our high school students are doing a lot of their own transcript audits, um, learning how to read their transcript, what does that look like, um, making sure that they know what, what credit requirements are for graduation, um, what, what are they maybe missing, how do they need to make up those credits if they're missing, um, and we do a lot of tests, test prep, um, for SAT testing as that is a graduation requirement in the state of New Mexico. Um, so even while most colleges um, are becoming more and more test optional, um, we do allow, or we do re provide, I'm sorry, we do <laughs> provide um, the test prep for our students um, for about six weeks leading up to them taking the SAT in the spring. You can go on. So um, obviously I don't have to explain to most of you the difference in all of these. Um, what a college is, what a trade school is, or even a gap year. Um, I will say in terms of gap years, um, we do tend to encourage students to avoid them as much as possible. Um, some students just don't know what they wanna do and, and can't make up their mind and it just happens. Um, but really one of the things that we try to make sure our students understand is that once you step away from being in school, it's a lot harder to get back into it and they're more likely to be successful. Um, if they just continue and go into um, college or, or even a trade school program immediately following high school. Um, we also encourage our students if they're interested in a trade that they can begin. Um, thankfully, um, CNM offers so many opportunities for students to take some of those dual credit classes. They can start that process now um, and be extremely close to finishing if they haven't finished um, by the time they graduate. Um, I think that might be my last slide. No, not quite. Um, so there's lots of resources. There's so many resources out there. Um, I'm really grateful for um, the networking opportunities that provide us resources as a school, but of course, um, college, ca as college counselors um, in the high school setting um, have tons of resources for the post-secondary planning. Um, it's what we get to do all day long. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing that. Um, the library and online resources, we don't talk about the library very often, um, but there are resources available at school libraries or at the, you know, city library, um, and online is my best friend. Um, just there's so much available out there, um, and so we 
try to provide kind of a hub here for our students um, of things that they can go directly to and know where to find something that they might be looking for, whether it's a scholarship um, or just program information about um, courses they may be interested in or a degree program they may be interested in. And then of course, college fairs. Um, we try to give our students um, information about every opportunity that presents itself to um, visit with colleges, um, both here on campus and away. Um, like I said, we love going to the CNM College Day event just because it showcases all the different opportunities that students have available to them. Um, we bring lots of colleges on campus to do presentations for our students um, from around the country um, just so they can get kind of the opportunity to hear what's available outside of New Mexico as well. Um, I do love to see students step outside of the state and earn their education and then come back and and um, take what they've learned and, and contribute back to their community here. Great, well today I'll be talking about three opportunities that um, I use. I'm the College Career Readiness Counselor with the Indian Education Department. Um, I've been with the Indian Education Department since 2018 and I do have my master's in counseling. What I'm going to talk about today, um, the three different ways that we have engaged is uh, a college career fair. I work with a program called Jobs for America's Graduates, uh, JAG for short. And we do a special award here at APS. Um, it was something that was worked out with our school board probably about 15 years ago, but I'm gonna share how we use it to engage students in various manners. See, and my clicker is not working now. Interesting, there we go. So in a few weeks, I am going to have my annual college career fair. I invite um, colleges, career opportunities. I heard that Explora was on here. If you would like to have a table talking about different opportunities you have for students. Obviously the logistics and identifying a venue, starting a list, um, I use Google Forms to keep track of everybody that signs up to be a college representative, as well as I have a student and parent RSVP list. Students are encouraged to volunteer for my event. They get a certificate at the end. And I help, um, I utilize the students to help with promoting the event, setting up the tables and chairs. They greet the organizations. Uh, they all get opportunities to go around and ask questions. I put them in hour long rotations so that they each get different jobs. Uh, we have them take pictures to um, do some marketing about the event. And um, one thing that I do wanna share is a tip that I've learned how to organize. So today I was at the UNM College Career Fair and um, got a handful of business cards of potential people that could have tables at our booth. I utilize a program called Cam Card, and I don't want to stop my slideshow now because sometimes we have technology. But at the end, what Cam Card does is you can take a photo of the business cards. Oh, these are upside down. And it imports all of it into an Excel spreadsheet with a picture of the business card. It saves me hours of entry and you can organize it then by date. Um, you can put them into groups. I have colleges, careers, apprenticeship programs, um, partnerships and things like that. So I'll share that at the end, but this has been um, a great way to stay organized because I think as resource people, we gather a ton of resources, but then trying to get back to how do we keep all of that organized. So like I said, I have student volunteers. Um, I have them come one hour before the event so I can do an orientation with them. I walk them through the building so they are aware of where restrooms are, where vendors are coming. I have greeters, um, I'll go into here. The sign-in table, we do a food table so I have students doing the food. We give away prizes. I have organizations um, bring their own swag and we they can give them away at the tables and they can also give it away for prizes. The way that students can earn tickets to get the prizes is by asking questions. 
So when organizations come in, we give them a roll of tickets, you know, 30, 40, 50, just regular tickets. And when the students come in, we give them a handout of questions to ask representatives to encourage dialogue and meaningful conversation. Every question that they ask, they get a ticket, they put their name on the ticket, and um, every hour we give away tons of prizes. I have lots of organizations donate things. You could see um, the table on the right side here. We had so many prizes given, backpacks, um, movie tickets, whatever people wanted to bring, we left. And when I'm promoting this to students, I say, you get great information. It's also like Christmas, you walk out with the bag full of goodies, but the real reason they're there is to get the information. Oops, I think I went backwards. Here's just a handful of organizations that I had. Um, when I have my event at Bernafasio, that's our APS training center. And I just use the pendants on the windows when they first walk in to, as my decorations. And since organizations bring their own tablecloths and um, they have their own uh, things that, you know, this one has a game wheel that decorates the room. I have found that with the felt and sticking it up as there's putty you can get like at Walmart, it's an adhesive putty. I tried all different kinds of tape and nothing, <laughs> no tape worked. So just an FYI. Here's the, again, the organizations brought prizes. Uh, we did drawings. Oh, here every 30 minutes and everyone left with something. These were some of the questions on a handout that we give the students to ask. And I just want to start dialogue. Um, what is a typical work day like? What do you like least, best and least about your job? What led you to your current job? So we have career questions. And then we also have academic questions. And um, this really helped because I would, the first year I did it, we didn't give a list of questions and students were like, I, some of them, I don't know what to ask. I don't know. And then I'll just say, pick a question and ask. And that really gets everybody engaged. The certificates I do, I make these up ahead of time since I have students RSVP on a Google sheet and identify if they want to volunteer. I fill it out. If um, sometimes I have students show up and they didn't RSVP, I actually have access to the printer now, and one of the student volunteer jobs is taking care of the certificates for me. Um, the ones that are printed, as students leave, they can pick it up. If we need to make them, because I have the students sign in, we have the names of um, the students, and if they don't have a certificate, we have it, so when they walk out the door, they have a certificate. They love these certificates. And I just used a template off of Word. I'm going to transition now to a program called Jobs for America's Graduates. Um, this program is a nationwide program. It's been around for over 40 years. It engages students in um, meaningful job opportunities, project-based learning, and we have it at three high schools in APS. We have it at Del Norte, we have it at Rio Grande and Cibola. It is also, it used to be at Bernalillo, Rio Rancho, Zuni Pueblo. We just picked up um, Alamo, New Mexico, started the JAG program this year, as well as Carlsbad. And what they have found is students that are engaged in JAG programs, their graduation rate and job placement rate far exceeds other students that have barriers. So students that work best um, and are referred into the program are students with barriers. So it could be a single person household, um, economics, different things. Because Indian Ed, we secured a grant for Native American students. We need at uh, two of our sites it's exclusive to Native American students. We could open it up to all students if, um, this gets technical, but if the principal would job share with us, but it's all over the country. There is a leadership conference every fall that uh, 
the each JAG programs elect officers and they learn about committee structures and running meetings, Robert's Rules of Orders. In the spring, we have a um, career conference where they have competitions on interviewing, public speaking, some uh, business type scenarios. They put together a portfolio of all the work that they've done. Some of the students earn national recognition. They get to go to Washington, D.C. and compete. And we've also had competitions in Florida. The JAG teacher is called a specialist, and they have a lower caseload than a traditional high school teacher because they offer more in support, and they do a lot of employer engagement, getting speakers into the classroom to um, talk about various job opportunities and the design is to do a lot more field trips with these students and to do wraparound services. Um, all specialists are trained in trauma support and, and the specialists often travel with the students for this engagement. I believe it's in all 50 states. I wish it was in every single high school across the United States because it is an amazing program. So maybe someday. Um, I jumped ahead of myself. This is an initiation ceremony and every fall there will be officers initiated. Here was a picture with Senator Bill Tallman and four of the students at Del Norte and they got special jackets for those students. Each um, school designs their own initiation ceremony. Rio Grande is the fabulous one. They actually run the snack bar down there. So they have a lot of um, fundraising money that they can use for their ceremonies. This was the initiation at Cibola last year and the officers being recognized. Here's some trips that I got to chaperone a few years ago to Washington, DC. And in the bottom right, you can see students, they were from all over the country. Senators um, and congressmen typically get behind this. And I was in a room uh, with I think it was 24 senators from various states acknowledging these students and helping them to be successful. The third thing I'm going to talk about today is the Seals and Stoll Award. This is right now exclusive to APS, but it's something you can think about starting in your schools to, as a way to honor students as well as to promote student engagement. So right now we have um, Students need to be enrolled in APS, complete a 506 or a CIB, have a GPA of 2.0 or higher, and less than 10 absences in the class. The first seal that I'm going to talk about is the Indian Education Tribal Seal, and students need to write a two to three page paper on their tribe, including history, customs, feast days, etc. They create a Google slide presentation. And they also need um, to get recommendations from non-family members. They need to prepare a demonstration related to their tribe. I've seen dancers. Uh, one student last year showed how he designed and put up a teepee. We had um, food demonstrations. One student came from two different tribes and her grandmas had quilted her two different quilts when she was a baby and she showed the differences in the quilting patterns from the two different tribes. So something that is relevant to their culture that they would like to share in front of a panel of judges. The second one is called the Distinguished Shield for Service Learning. And this is where students volunteer 30 hours and they would write a paper and presentation on their volunteer experience. They don't have to do it all at one place. Um, I heard Explorer mention internships. Um, it's great to know because I like to offer a menu of choices for students to think of where they would like to volunteer so they have a meaningful experience. Right now I have a list. I have um, a senior citizen center, our APS clothing bank, um, an equestrian place in the South Valley, uh, if people are technology minded, we have a place that fixes iPads and cell phones and just a wide variety of places that they can volunteer. We had one student, he had a pickup and he went out and cut wood and delivered it to people that heated their homes with wood that were unable to go get their own firewood. 
Um, oh, I just, I always jump ahead. So here's some places that they can volunteer. Um, and I'm always looking for more to add to our list. The last seal that I'm going to mention is the language seal. And at APS, we offer Navajo one and two and Zuni one and two. And students need to take those classes. They don't have to be proficient in the language, but they need to have a basic understanding. They need to be able to introduce themselves in their native language and answer simple questions. So if a judge said, stand up and turn around, they would know or pick up a cup or you know something um, along those lines. Here's a student's a senior banquet. We do a banquet at the end of every year to honor our seniors. Last year we did it at Isleta Resort and Casino. It was our largest one ever. We had 500 in attendance. We have tribal leaders come and congratulate the students and sometimes they bring small gifts for them. It's just a wonderful time for to give the recognition to these students that um, graduated. <laughs> 